I think a lot of people that come skiing in the morning think there's a big on switch at the end of the parking lot. And the first employee comes in and they flip that on switch and everything just pops open, lights come on, lifts are spinning, happy employees are in place and the place is turning. That's just not the case. My name is Tom Lomax. I'm the director of mountain operations at Mount Bachelor Ski Resort. This story is about how this place goes around the clock. Mountain all call. All lifts are 10 9. Have a great night. We have a, a vehicle maintenance shop. It's really the heart of of what we do, keeping things turning. It's the mechanical heart of the operation. And they take care of all sorts of things. They take care of the grooming fleet. They take care of all of our trucks. They take care of all of our snowmobiles. And our lift maintenance crew works out of there. Uh, and it's a very busy place. And it's definitely its own 24-hour operation. There's people coming and going out of that shop all night, all day. Well, on a maintenance standpoint, I've got eight, eight guys that takes care of just a little over a hundred pieces of equipment. We were fortunate this year to get three brand new cats, all tier four, which uh, from an environmental standpoint is, is a huge deal. Grooming operations, those crews come in here at about 3.30, quarter to four in the afternoon, and then they're out on the mountain as soon as the skiers are off the hill, and the patrol kind of turns the mountain over to grooming. So I've been grooming at Mount Bachelor for about, well, five seasons now, and just enjoy kind of the team that we have up here between the mechanics and all of, you know, the Mount Bachelor employees working together to keep this mountain going. I enjoy working at night because we get the mountain to ourselves, kind of. You know, nobody's up here. Things happen at night that don't usually happen during the day between like cats breaking down or snowstorms that you can't see anything in and it makes it pretty tough to get things done but we seem to manage pretty well. Snow removal is another one of those things that uh, is really behind the scenes. That crew comes in at 10 o'clock at night and they've got that 35 acres or 40 acres plus a bunch of service roads and a bunch of service parking lots to clean out by, you, gotta, you have to be done in the front end of the parking lot by six the next morning. I can be really stressful. Yeah. You sit there and work on a really stormy night where you can't see and you're pushing snow and it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere. Then towards the morning, you finally start seeing in the wall, and it's like, oh, we're almost done, finally. But then you look at what's filled in behind you, and then you're in trouble. You gotta start again. So a lot of what grooming does is supplies access by grooming the cat tracks so that the other operational crews can get around. Grooming from Lift Maintenance. Good morning, we're getting ready to head out. How's the mountain look? It's working a lot better than yesterday. I just called. Uh, got a little bit of drifting, but the roads were hitting on very long ago. You guys should be totally fine. And uh, that's about it. Copy, thank you. Have a good one. Lift maintenance is the first really mountain ops crew to hit the ground in the morning. and. Uh, they come into the shop at 5 and get geared up with snowmobiles and headlamps and they break up into teams and their job is to get around the mountain and to pre-op and pre-run every lift that we're going to operate that day. Copy that, turning pie in reverse. Yeah, tower fault, tower 17. Um, it won't reset, so can you get eyes on it and I will bypass. Yeah, it's the RPDs. That's really common. So it was just the ice that lifted the rope and made that clearance on the RPD not see the rope anymore. So it's just until we get that ice cleared off and now you can see it's, it's clear and we can take the bypass off. R26, Tower 17's bypassed. Quick remove. 
And if there's any mechanical things that came up during the day that are going to be an issue for the next day, then maybe lift maintenance is out working on a lift that night. Or they're doing some routine maintenance that needs to be done that they can't do when the lift is open. So patrol comes up, um, they've got a couple of different modes. On a, on a regular morning, they head out on the hill um, with the lift ops right at 8, and that's kind of our staff upload time. And then they have a whole variety of, of chores that they're doing in the morning. Skiing runs, looking for hazards, they're setting up uh, fencing and, and slow signs and that kind of thing. They're assessing what kind of safety situations there could be with whatever the day is giving us for conditions. And then when we're in avalanche conditions, they'll come in earlier. Colleen and Robbie are going to do our east route. Tanner and I are going to be on the low route and Drew, you and Tyra are the high route. This is a two pound cast booster. It's a, made of an explosive called PETN. Um, it's pretty fast explosive. It detonates at 25,000 feet per second. And we're arming it with a 90 second cap and fuse assembly. So this is igniter. We put that on the end of it. We pop our safety wires and pull our cap off and we pop the igniter. It spits out a spits out a directional spark that starts a burn. You can see the smoke, smell the smoke, unless it's really windy. So we've got a little wind slab pillow sitting up here. We're gonna use this string line to tram it down. Tanner's shot placement sounds like he's gonna go for the shallower spot on the other side of the breakover, see if we can't knock the legs out of it. Go. You can see the size of the ride someone would go on, so it's our job to confirm that that's not gonna happen. So now Tanner's gonna just jump on this pillow here. He's got his float bag on, if there were a big slide. So lift ops come in and uh, get a pretty good briefing. Uh, today should be our busiest day of all break. We're expecting to see probably 8,000 people. So oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple thousand more than you guys have seen so far, most likely. So let's uh, go uh, make some memories for some guests today and get out there and enjoy the sun and have a fun day. And most importantly, be safe out there. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So we also have a group of terrain park crews and they're, they're tasked with building, grooming, and operating the terrain parks. Within the terrain park, we've got 18 employees who run five to seven people a day during the day, and then we're running six to seven people at night, depending on the storm cycle and what events we have going on and what builds we're working on. Parking cars is totally an art. If you do it wrong, you can't get anybody into the mountain. And if you do it right, you can get everybody in quickly and efficiently, and it's a challenge. People are coming in and they don't want to go where you're telling them to go. And they don't want to park where you're telling them to park, but those guys know what they're doing and, and they know how to fill these parking lots and use all the space that we have. I love my job, yeah. Some of the challenges are, you know, cleared lots, if the lot's cleared or not, but snow removal is Top notch this year, so deep snow days, getting cars unstuck. That's really about it. This is the 855 Mountain All Call. The following lifts are now open. Call Chaser, Rainbow, Sunrise, Skyliner, Sunshine, and Pine Martin. Oh. All right, front row, come on out. My name is Sue Foster. I manage the Nordic Center here. I've been here for eight years and um, I love my job. We are a mini resort within a resort. Uh, we basically have all the services of, the, of our sister across the parking lot, um, but on a small scale. And we ski uphill. <laughs> I 
And everybody that's started in the ski industry does it because they love to ski and ride and they want to share that with other people. My best days are days when it's just an incredible powder day and I see all sorts of friends up here on the mountain having the best day of their lives and that's the greatest day for me.